everyone, we are moving on to question 1.2 of paper 2. And this is where we are hitting some of the volume questions, okay? These ones generally do give a bit of trouble, but the most important thing to always note with these sort of questions, right, is your units. Units are everything when it comes to questions of area, distance, and volume, okay? So let's read the scenario and then jump into the question. There are rectangular prism-shaped water troughs for cattle on display. The troughs are made of concrete as shown in the picture below, right? So there's the trough, trough, when you say trough, um, and obviously there's water poured in there, and it's given us the length, the width, and the height. What's important here is do you see that the length, the width, and the height are all given in different measurements, right? When we do any form of calculation, we must always make sure that these are consistent. So we're going to have to do some conversion here. We know that already. Okay, then it gives us the formula for our volume, which is length times width times height, right, which is the three dimensions, remember, and remember I said when we talk about volume, we always do units to the three, because there are three dimensions, that's how it works, right, um, and then it says a trough is long, narrow, open container for animals to drink from, okay, cool, so water's um, poured in there, and then the, the animals like go slurp it up, cool, and then it says one liter equals a thousand centimeters cubed, okay, that's quite important, um, let's now look at what they ask us to do. So it's asked us to use this information and answer these questions. So it says calculate in centimeters cubed, right? This is important. If we do not put our answer in centimeters cubed, we will lose a mark, okay? The volume of the concrete used to make this trough, if the trough can hold a maximum of 485 liters of water, okay? And it's for seven marks. So sometimes when we see questions like this, we're like, okay, maybe we should just skip over this because it's like a lot of marks and like I'm not 100% sure what to do. But let's break this down into bits. Firstly, what we're going to do is what we originally talked about. We're going to convert all of this, right, into the same unit. Now, the units they want is a centimeters cubed. So I think we should convert all of these into centimeters. So let's just start by doing that, right? Okay, let me just write this down. Let me make sure you can see what I'm writing. Otherwise, it is no help to man or beast. Okay, so the length, right, the length equals three meters. Okay, the width equals 685 millimeters. And the height, oh, my writing sometimes, equals 40 centimeters. Okay, that's all given here. Those are the dimensions of the trough. Okay, so let's convert all of these into centimeters, right? So we know that one meter equals 100 centimeters, right? So for length, so I'm just gonna put a little L there, but for length, width, and height. So we know it three meters, right, is gonna be three times 100, which is 300 centimeters. Okay, so now we know what the length is in centimeters. Let's now go on to width, okay? We know that 10 millimeters equals one centimeter. Now you might be thinking, oh, you're like, oh, that's all good and well, Margie, saying we know these things. You should know these things, guys. You must really learn these measurements, these conversions. They will never be given to you. You have to know them, okay? If you don't know them, as we're doing this, try commit them to memory, okay? So we know 10 millimeters equals one centimeter. So then if we have 685 millimeters, we want to know how many centimeters it is. Now you could be thinking, okay, goodness, how are we gonna do that, right? But we know to get from 10 to 1, we have to divide it by 10, right? Remember I said in a previous video that when we go from millimeters, a small measurement, to centimeters, which is a larger measurement, we always divide, right? Because there will always be fewer centimeters than millimeters because centimeters is a larger measure, okay? So if we divide by 10 to get to 1, then what we do here is we also divide by 10, right? And that will give us our width in centimeters. So we say 685 divided by 10. Excellent, right? So it'll be 68.5 centimeters. Okay, so now we have all of our different measures in centimeters. Okay, we have the height, we have, sorry, we have the length, we have the width, and we have the height, which is already in centimeters. We don't have to do anything to that. It's already converted for us. Well, not converted, displayed in that way. Okay, so now what's quite important, right, is it says, what is the volume of concrete used to make this trough, right? If the trough can hold a maximum of 485 liters. So what it wants, right, isn't, it doesn't want the volume of the whole trough. It just wants the volume of the concrete, right, that is used to make the trough. 
right? So whatever volume we work out by using the length, width, and height, we're going to have to take this volume of water away from that volume because this volume basically says if this whole trough is filled up, what is the volume of the shape? Whereas they actually only want the volume of the concrete used to make the trough. Okay, so it's basically saying if I have a square, right, and what I do is I hollow it out, right, so I basically take out all the middle and I just have basically the shell of the square with no top, right. What they're wanting to know is they're wanting to know what is the volume of that shell when we've taken all of the insides out, right, and that's exactly what we have to do here, right, because remember the trough is hollow so that we can put water into it so that an animal can drink out of it okay so let's work firstly work out what the volume is so volume is length times width times height if you don't know where that's from they give that to us over here so length we know is 300 centimeters right times width which is six uh, sorry 68.5 times height which is 40 okay let me just check you can still see what i'm doing cool um, so let's just type that into our calculator. Can you see I clean my calculator? You must be proud of me. Um, times 40. Okay, cool. Right, so this is what the volume, right, what the volume of the trough is if it is full, right? If it is full, filled with water, right? And we have to put this in centimeters cubed, right? Otherwise, what does it mean, right? Volume always has to be associated with a measurement. We put it in centimeters cubed because there are three dimensions, length, width and height. Three dimensions to the power of three. Remember that. Cool. So that's the volume of the total troughs. Now we want the volume of the concrete, right? So the volume of the concrete is basically going to be the volume that we just calculated up here, right? That's going to be that. Take away the volume of water that can be held in the trough. Okay, now let's go back to the question and see what it says, right? So it says, the trough can hold a maximum of 485 liters of water. So we know that the max volume of trough, right, of trough water, I'm gonna say it's not the trough, remember it's the water the trough can hold, is 485 liters, right? That's given to us. Okay, but now we know that this here is written in centimeters cubed and this here is written in liters, right? So we have to convert one of them, right? In order for us to do this calculation that we've just put over here. Okay, but remember they asked us to give our answer in centimeters cubed, right? So that means we have to convert the liters into centimeters, right? And we know over here that one liter equals a thousand centimeters. So let's write that, one liter equals a thousand centimeters cubed. So 485 liters, right, is going to equal four, oh, 485 times a thousand, right? Because we know that when we go from liters to centimeters cubed, we have to multiply by a thousand, right? So this becomes 485,000 centimeters cubed, okay? Perfect. Now we have everything we need in order to finish our question. So we're going to go back to the volume of the concrete. So the volume of the concrete is going to be 8,200 and sorry, 822,000. Sometimes these numbers like they just like kill me. I can't pronounce them. Okay, cool. So we're basically saying the total volume of the trough if it was filled minus the volume of the water, right, that can be used to fill the trough, and that will give us the volume of the concrete, right? Perfect. So we're going to say 822000 minus 485000. Let's just check that we've typed that in correctly. We have indeed, and that is 337,000 watt centimeters cubed. Okay, you have to put in the units. If you do not put in the units, you do not get the question correct. Okay, so just look at that total sort of um, way that I've gone about it. First of all, you'll get some marks for just converting stuff into centimeters. You'll get some marks for working out the volume of the trough and then saying the volume of the concrete is the volume of the trough minus the volume of the water the trough can hold. Okay, you convert the volume of the, the water the trough can hold into centimeters cubed 
because that is what they asked us to do, right? And then we say the volume of the trough minus the volume of the water the trough can hold, and that is the volume of the concrete. Okay, go over that a couple of times if you're not 100% clear, but that is how we go about it. Okay, so that's seven marks, guys, in the bag. And it wasn't that difficult, was it? We just had to do it quite methodically. Okay, so let's now go to 1.2.2. Okay, so 1.2.2 says a coo, a cow, sorry, I don't know why I said it so weirdly, a cow drinks 56 liters of water per day. Alfred stated that a full trough has enough water for eight cows per day. Okay, it says verify with calculations. So you can't just be like, yeah, I feel like Alfred is probably right. We don't care how you feel. We have to do some calculations in this instance. Verify with calculations whether the statement is correct. Okay, so even after we do the calculation, we then have to say if it's correct or if it's incorrect, right? Doing a calculation in and of itself without giving an insight in this instance is not answering the question. Okay, so let's see if Alfred is correct. Let's see if he's good at estimation. Okay, so we know that the max, let me check, you can see what I'm saying. The max water, right? The max water the trough can hold, I don't know I'm saying water, so really water, is 485 liters. And you might be saying, okay, Margie, where did you get that? We know that, right, from the previous question. But let's say if we know that one cow can drink 56 liters, oh, that's a lot of water, eh? Per day, let's just say that, per day, right? Then what are eight cows gonna drink, right? So eight cows are gonna drink 56 times eight, right? Because if they each drink 56, and we have to times that by eight. So let's do the little calculation there. Okay, 56 liters per cow, and we have eight cows, and that equals 448 liters for eight cows, right? Now, what we have to do is we've done the calculation, right? But we have to say whether he's correct or if he's incorrect. He said that the trough will be enough for eight cows. And we know that 448 liters is less than 485 liters. So Alfred, our boy Alfred is correct. Oh, let say is, not Alfred correct. That's not very good English. Alfred, Alfred is correct, okay? He is correct. He he made the correct estimation and we verified it with a um, calculation. Perfect. Now, let's go on to 1.2.3. Remember, guys, to always leave a line between your questions. It makes it easier for your marker to mark, but it also means that if you make a little mistake, which sometimes that happens, um, you can just go back and add in, right? Just check, even if you want to add in like a little explanation or something like that, just to get maybe a couple more marks. Okay, so 1.2.3 says, determine how long to the nearest minute, again, they've told us what they wanted in, the nearest minute. So we know if it says nearest minute, right, it means we have to round off. When you see something say nearest, you must be thinking in your mind, in your mind, sorry, round off. That's what you should be thinking. Okay, so it will take, uh, so sorry, determine how long in the to the nearest minute it will take to fill an empty trough, right, if the water flows at a rate of 14 Point five liters per minute. Okay. Now again, the trough holds right. The trough holds four hundred and eighty-five liters. Okay. So we know that in one minute, right, it fills up fourteen point five liters. So we want to know how many minutes it takes to fill up the trough with four hundred and eighty-five liters. So what we're going to say is we say four hundred and eighty-five divided by 14.5, and that will give us the number of minutes it takes to fill the trough, okay? Remember to always make sure that you're typing in things correctly, because I've done this a couple of times where you think you got the right number, and then you're just actually just making up your own question, right? So just be very careful, because you don't want to make calculated errors, like my speech here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have 485, Right, and then we divide it by the number of liters that can be put into the trough or filled up into the trough every minute. Okay, and that gives us 33.4482 minutes. Okay, but what did the question ask us, guys? It asked us to the nearest minute, right? So, when we have to do to the nearest minute, remember, if it is between zero and four, we round down. If it's five to nine, we round up. That's the rule. Okay, 
So I just want to make sure you can see this. Okay, good. You can see it. Okay, perfect. So we see that four over here is, is um, less than five, right? So we're going to round down and it's going to be 33 minutes. Okay, and that will be your answer. Okay, so that is the whole of question 1.2. That is 13 marks, but you see it actually wasn't too difficult. We just had to be very methodical. Okay, I hope you found that useful. And let's now move on to 1.3.